I think they like you. Good morning. I'm going to... I'm going to close my eyes and pretend you're clapping for me. <laughs> Please, have a seat. Have a I think they like you. That's what I think. You see this senator right here? If, in fact, you were not picked to be the next Secretary of Labor, I would be run out of town. First of all, let me say, I, I don't know, I see a lot of members of Congress here who are strong, and by the way, they've got a full day today, they're supposed to be in Baltimore for, up in for a, a, a caucus up there, and, and uh, I don't want to start reading out names in case some aren't here, but there's a, you've had overwhelming support in the caucus, in both the House and the Senate, I might add. And uh, I'm joined by Vice President Harris, and uh, who chairs the House White House Task Force on Work Organization and, uh, and Empowerment to ensure that every worker, every worker has a voice and the ability to exercise their sacred right to organize. That's a big deal, the right to organize. You know? Okay. We've had a... We've had no better partner in this effort and so much more that he's done than Marty Walsh from Boston. <laughs> Marty, stand up. <laughs> Marty has several, has several claims to fame. He's a proud son of Irish immigrants, mayor of Boston, was the, for the last two years Secretary of Labor, and I assume he knows something about hockey. <laughs> I asked if he'd take me with him, but he wouldn't. <laughs> Chris, he thought I'd be the hockey puck. Uh, anyway. Look, it matters. I, uh, I promise to be the most pro-union president uh, in presidential history. I'm going to put this down. <laughs> and folks, Thank you. The reason, thank you. Thank you. The reason I ran was to rebuild the backbone of this nation, the middle class. Grow the economy from the bottom up and the middle out, not from the top down. Because look, when in fact you build it that way, everybody does well. The rich still do very well. They don't get hurt. It's like it's not the punishment, you know? But when it trickles down, not a whole lot dropped on our kitchen table when I was growing up. Not much trickle there. And we're changing that. You know, there was a law passed in the early 30s saying that, not that unions could organize, but we should have more unions. We should have more unions. Encourage them. And We're all guided by things that we've heard our parents and our grandparents repeat a thousand times growing up and as a young person. And my dad, I'm, I know some of you are tired of hearing me say, my dad used to say, and he meant it, a job is about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about respect. It's about being able to look your kid in the eye and say everything's going to be all right and mean it. And he meant it. Marty Walsh understands that each of these fundamental principles in his very bones. The past two years, we've made incredible progress, in my view, and Marty's been an overwhelming reason why we have made that progress. Our economy sees record job growth. Historic laws that have, I've signed are going to create even more new jobs in years to come. And Marty put us on track to meet the uh, bold goal of a million new registered apprenticeships by 2025.
That means training the pathways for everyone, from teachers to truckers to cybersecurity specialists to construction workers. Marty played a pivotal role in delivering rail workers this historic pay raise they got to prevent a potential catastrophic strike at the same time. But when he, we signed into law the Butch Lewis Act that protects the pensions of millions of men. <laughs> Sounds easy now, but it was a long time in coming. Thanks, Marty, for all your hard work. Marty's done an incredible job fighting wage theft, combating ex ex the way that workers and laborers is exploited, and uh, protecting workers and their rights and their safety. You know, uh, for example, he helped recover more than $520 million in back wages for liquidated damage from more than 335 workers, 335,000 workers, I should say. And he made sure employees understand the National Labor Relations Act, again, didn't say we should allow unions, said we should encourage unions. And we're going to continue to do that. Thanks for, to Marty's leadership, support for unions in America now is higher than it's been any time in the last 60 years, Marty. I've known Marty a long time. I know his heart. Marty, thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for standing up for labor. Thank you for standing up for ordinary people. And thank you for having my back, pal. <laughs> Most of all, thank you, your partner, Lori, who's watching from home. <laughs> He's here. He's here. <laughs> Front row. And I know your mom, Mary, is watching from home as well. Mary, you're raising an incredible son. You're raising an incredible son. If I ever want anybody in the foxhole with me, I want Marty Walsh there. Marty, you've been incredible. I really mean it. We're grateful for your service. We're grateful for your service to the American workers and to our nation. And Marty is the first to say that the Department of Labor, Department of Labor has, accom has, a, has accomplished uh, an awful lot, but it wouldn't have done all this we've done without Julie Sue. She's been a strong partner and a real leader. She used to be a Secretary of Labor before, <laughs> in a state about as big as the rest of America. <laughs> 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 Julie knows in her bones as well the people who get up every morning and go to work and bust their necks just to make an honest living deserve something, someone to fight on their side, to give them an even shot, just, just a shot, so they don't get stiffed. Well, that's happened to too many workers for much too long. Fighting to make sure they have a fair shot is, is uh, no one's left behind. Julie has spent her life fighting for that vision, her entire professional career. And uh, as a civil rights lawyer, the leader of California State Labor Department, the biggest in the entire country, Julie spent two years representing workers, many without college degrees, many who didn't speak English, but who worked long, long hours at low pay and we're just looking for a little bit of dignity. That's a little bit of dignity for themselves and their families. She's increased the minimum wage, cracked down on wage theft, protected, protected trafficked workers, established and enforced workplace safety standards, and so much more. The Department of Labor, she's led the effort to ensure jobs of high growth industries like semiconductor manufacturing, broadband, healthcare, and so much more making sure they're good-paying jobs, high-quality jobs, and union jobs. Union jobs. When I spoke at the Business Roundtable, they just wanted to know why I was so pro-union. I said, to save you money. <laughs> no kidding. Most Americans out there think you want to be an electrician or you want to be a laborer, you want to be a carpenter, you show up and you get a job. Well, you spend four to five years as an apprentice. It's like going back to college with a little added degree. They're the best workers in the world. And you might as well get the job done right the first time and long term save you a lot of money. And by the way, I didn't get much blowback when I made that comment. And like, and like, and like it uh, is for, for Marty, it's personal for Julie. Born in Wisconsin, she's the daughter of Chinese immigrants. A mom uh, of a union worker, her mom was a union worker and her dad was a small business owner. She went to law school, served the people of California. Julie is the American dream. She is what the American dream is about. And, 
more importantly, I think even more importantly, she's committed to making sure that dream is in the reach of every American. Every American. That's what she's all about. She's going to make sure it happens as the fourth Asian American woman in my cabinet. But, you know, I know Julia, most important title is mom. And she has two accomplished, wonderful daughters. Stand up, girls, will you? <laughs> The reason, the reason we're a few, a few minutes late, I was asking them what they were doing. They're both in college still. And uh, we had a little debate in there, whether Amherst was better than Yale or Yale was better than Amherst. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I won't get into that. <laughs> it's my honor, and I mean it sincerely, my honor to nominate Julie Sue to be our next Secretary of Labor. And I ask the United States Senate to move this nomination quickly so we can continue the progress to build this economy that works for everyone. Julie, thank you for your willingness to serve. Thank you for all you've done, and thank you for what you're about to do. God love you, as my mother would say. All you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. President, for your words and for your trust. Uh, 60 years ago, my mom came to the United States on a cargo ship because she couldn't afford a passenger ticket. Recently, she got a call from the President of the United States telling her that her daughter was going to be nominated to be U.S. Labor Secretary. <laughs> So I believe in the transformative power of America, and I know the transformative power of a good job. I know because it was the kind of job that my mom got that had predictable hours, paid sick leave, health benefits, a secure income, and a pension when she retired. A union job that gave my parents a path to the middle class and gave our family the kind of breathing room that the president talks about. We have never had a president who has made workers, worker well-being, and worker power so central to his vision of a strong nation and a strong economy. <laughs> Mr. President, when you said you wanted to be the most pro-worker, pro-union president in history and restore decency, and build the middle class, I said, sign me up for that. <laughs> I want to help do that. Uh, and it's been my honor to be the deputy secretary. Um, those shared values are what I will work to make real every day. To Secretary Marty Walsh, uh, with whom I have worked side by side, you embraced a true, real partnership between us from day one. You have change the world for millions of workers, and you will be sorely missed, not just by those of us who got to work with you every day, but by those workers who have benefited from your leadership. And I'm grateful for all that I've learned from you, and I am proud to be chosen to, in the words of the president, finish the job. <laughs> I have also been able to work in close partnership with the people who are the Department of Labor. To my team who's here and across the country, especially the career staff who have devoted your lives to the mission of the DOL, you are the heart and soul of the department, and I'm thrilled to continue our good work together. And I stand here today deeply grateful for community. And as I look out, I see that today is a celebration of that community. 
When the president talks about those who've been forgotten or invisible, I know what he means because I have spent my career fighting for them to be seen. So to all workers who are toiling in the shadows, to workers who are organizing for power and respect in the workplace, know that we see you, we stand with you, and we will fight for you. And to my daughters, my Baubays, who are here, thank you for the love, for missing class to be here today, uh, for the sacrifices that you have made so Mama can do this work. I would not be who I am without you. We have an extraordinary opportunity to build an economy where no one feels invisible where every individual and community not only gets to benefit from the president's transformative vision for America, but also gets to help make it real. So let's build together. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Girls, come up here. Oh, come up. Come up. Ladies and gentlemen, I know there are more presidents in this room than I met with when I met with the G20 presidents, <laughs> but uh, of unions. But uh, I also know there's a bunch of cabinet members here. Would all the cabinet members walk up on the stage here that are here? Come on. The reason I did, I want to know if anybody's working today. <laughs> Secondly, we got a bunch of members of Congress that are here today, too. I don't want to ask them to have to come up, but if you want to, you can. Uh, I got to start reading down. But at any rate, members of Congress, come on, come on up. I want you to know, maybe your strongest, most intimidating supporter is right there, the distinguished senator. <laughs> God love you. you work. <laughs> Folks, all kidding aside, putting politics aside, we can do a lot of good things. We have a shot to really do some really good things that are totally consistent with everything about what this country is about. And I'm just anxious to get finish the job here. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank all of you. And I wouldn't be standing here were it not for labor. Thank you all for all you've done for me, but much, much more importantly, all you've done for the country. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome to hang around. <laughs>